Oh, peace, brother. This is Adel from Memphis. Peace, Adel. Peace, man. I, I like what the. I'm good. I'm good. I like what the last caller uh, was uh, speaking on the children. You know, we always need to, you know, work on that angle. But I got a slightly different thing. I was uh, I was kind of thinking about listening to your show, some of your other shows, and that is, man. You know, we we all got can at least go with 10, 15 different reasons with what's wrong with Christianity. But we, I think we as a conscious community, we've been so conscious that we kind of can't see the forest for the trees, so to speak. We've overlooked probably the most powerful part of Christianity. We, we were all looking at it from a spiritual standpoint, but we should, we should have looked at it from the blueprint standpoint, the true purpose of the creation of Christianity, because certain brothers, if you will, in the conscious community have hijacked that blueprint and created their own versions of Christianity and have been making a lot of money because I think the original reason for Christianity was mind control and making money, capital. And we look at some of these different factions that have been created, Nuwabians, Nation of Islam, you name it. I mean, they've taken the, the, the most overlooked part of Christianity and have spun it into their own benefit. You know, we're talking about millions of dollars being made from a, from a, from a, uh, from an aspect that we, as you know, seekers hadn't even looked at, and they've been able to manipulate the masses or the I won't say the masses as a whole, but a large number of brothers that could be young, that could be good brothers in the community, but because now that they're in this organization, they can't help another organization or anybody else unless they become affiliated with them. So that's kind of what I'm, I won't say pissed off about, but that's like a major issue, you know, because I'm seeing too many brothers that want to do something positive, but they're not affiliated with this group, so they really can't, you know, fool with you on that level. So, you know. You're talking about basically a lack of consolidation. Well, that and the, with the teachers, you know, these so-called supreme teachers that have given you the Nation of Islam, given you Nuwapu or whatever. And but I'm just I'm just fed up with that those organizations and the way it's structured. Like Christianity, none of them want to fess up to the fact that it's really another form of Christianity. There's a there's a guy in between you and the supreme being. There's some guy. There's a mediator in between them. And this teacher is the only one who's been given this divine information through divine intervention. I mean, it's all a form of Christianity. No matter how they want to look at it, that's what it oh, is. Okay. Yeah. You I, know, that's I, kind I, of what I'm pissed saying. about. Yeah. You're talking so, about the, the toll, booth, toll booth personalities. These guys have set themselves up as liaisons between the truth and um, the listener. You know, like where you, in order for you to get true enlightenment, you have to go through them or you have to buy their product or something like that. That's what you're talking about. Exactly, exactly. And the fact that they won't admit that it's an, it's an offshoot of their Christian blueprint. See, that's what made Christianity so powerful. Number one, they came with Christianity first, you know, as far as to the, to the uh, people nowadays. Christianity came right. first. But that whole blueprint of, let me just give these people some form of hope and this savior that's going to come and get them later on, you know, just some way of putting them to cling on to hope. But through me only, though. You know what I mean? You know, <laughs> you know I mean, it, it's crazy. It's almost stupid in a sense, you know, to, you know, to call a spade a spade. is stupid. You know, but you can only go through that one person. That's kind of what I'm, you know, and really I want to see which, which faction will be the first one to say, hey, we're going to try to work with other groups. So, you know, we open for suggestions. I'm just waiting to see that. Well, you know. my man um, Shaka, who's in the group African Truth, says, you know, um, heterosexual, non-religious Africans. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what he said. We need to have, you know, some consolidation so we can get – people need to leave the, the, the spooky stuff alone right now. Yeah. We need practical yeah. solutions right now. And let's leave the spooky stuff alone. Exactly. You know, I can definitely also, dig that. And also, I don't think, I think that we can learn from, we can, we can learn from the past, but we have to 
take the lessons from the past and, and learn those lessons and build a new paradigm. You know what I mean? Like yeah. a base, do, sort of like similar to what the Japanese did. They, you don't see the Japanese walking around with um, samurai swords and, and, and looking like ninjas and stuff. You don't see that anymore. Yeah. But they take the principles of what the samurai was about and apply that to the new paradigm. And we need to do that. We need to find out what, what is truly an African epistemology, and then we got to take that and apply it to the day and you yeah. know, bring things up to date, make, a, a, I guess, a neo-African, so to speak. Yeah, definitely. I think uh, probably one of the first steps would be uh, the whole holistic health thing. I mean, we all, I mean, in order to serve anybody, which has is, which is always puzzled me, how can you set up a congregation, like whether it's Christianity, Islam, or whatever it is you want to do, how can you not teach your people how to eat and live longer? You would think you're making money off of these people, so why not keep them healthy? That's the last thing on the agenda. The whole agenda is pushing these products, you know. But, I'm, you know, I'm hoping maybe we can kind of work towards the holistic thing in a sense to try to get back to it. African centeredness as far as the form of eating because I'm seeing too many brothers and sisters coming to me, talking to me, or want to talk to me because I'm big on the health thing. They want to talk to me about trying to get off blood pressure medicines and things like that, you know. Right. Whenever we as Africans or melanated beings, we can't take salt. We can't eat, we can't, uh, eat salt like that. We can't consume it like uh, white people can. We retain it. Oh, and another thing. If you have the cure for AIDS, right? Oh man, don't even go there. Go you, ahead, though. <laughs> why would you be? Why would you be selling that to our people? Again, I mean, I mean go, I'm just, I'm just saying. I'm just. Saying. I know, I know. I'm serious. I'm serious. I'm serious. <laughs> I'm serious. If you I'm got serious. The cure the AIDS, you're gonna go to the people, our people who's dying and afflicted from this, and you're gonna give them a, a, a receipt. Again. What? Again, here we go again with this guy. You can only get it from this person. Right. See what I'm saying? It goes back to that again. But but you're totally right. I mean, why would you sell that? But I, I guess it makes him feel better to go around and brag on that fact, you know, because if you listen to that guy's rhetoric, it's always about him. No matter what the question is, it, it becomes a some way, somehow he's going to put himself on a pedestal because to me, if I have a cure for AIDS, I wouldn't go around bragging. I'd be curing people who have AIDS, especially right. in the black community. Exactly. I mean, that's, that's stupid. Exactly. I mean, but I think most people, again, this is that Christian blueprint, money-making. You have to put yourself above everything. It's kind of like that Vince McMahon thing. I don't know if you're in the WWE. I'm not either. But oh, yeah, one I, thing I've I'm noticed very is, familiar with it. <laughs> okay, one thing he, he will never allow to happen is, you can never get bigger than that company. I don't care if you Brock Lesnar, Hulk Hogan. Once you start getting bigger than the company, there's a way that we can get rid of you and we can bring you back, you know. So you can't – so for Doc oh, – I won't say his name. <laughs> so for this guy to give out this, anybody can go and get the same cure. Oh, this is all you use? Okay. And plus, I don't, I don't know if you know this, but the reason why nobody uh, – does herbal work in America really? Is because you can't patent a plant because you can get that out of any ground. You know what I mean? You can't really patent uh, a natural thing. Yeah, that's why you can't. That's why there aren't any patents on uh, natural cures because anybody can grow it. You know. Right. So, but anyway, but let's say you you go to this guy, he gives you uh, the cure, and you see what it is. You no longer need him. You can go right. and do this. And see, so for, if everybody's out there. Curing people, how relevant is he? Right. You know, that's the only thing I can think of because these egos have so to go. Think about, think, about, think about the mentality behind that because what that means is I would rather have people die than to do without me. Think about that. That's powerful. That is, that's, that's crazy to me. I'd rather have, I'd rather have everybody dead than to, for, the, for people to think that they can't do without me. That's a I don't even know if that's ego. Yeah, there is a lot I, of cynicism. Know, what is that? <laughs> Psychologically, man, that's also a form of self-hatred. 
You know, right. I mean, people people don't understand how much they really love their math 